Hello. Welcome. We are the intern ministers at Community Church of New York in Manhattan. We are Unitarian Universalists in the process of becoming ordained clergy. In this podcast, we delve into the life of an intern minister. We explore the ways our lives and internships intersect and how this is ministerial formation. I'm Megan Henry. I'm Carrie McAvoy. And we're, and we're revving, revving up! up. Hello, welcome our beloved Revving Up listening community. Um, you are at Revving Up with Megan and Carrie, and we are, this is um, our last recorded episode of season two before our live event, which is happening on Thursday, December 16th at 7 p.m. And um, so listeners, we would love for this to be interactive like it was last time and maybe even more interactive this time now that we've done one of these before. So we're, we're going to have um, this is going to be broadcast on our YouTube channel, the Community Church of New York YouTube channel. There will be a link for you to just click on that link. It's going to be super easy. Our amazing um, podcast producer creator, everything all amazing. Amy Wilson will be making that happen. And so you'll be able to interact with us by typing questions um, into the YouTube chat. I think I'm saying all of these words correctly, but anyway, it'll be really obvious and you'll be able to like type in questions to us, comments, um, things that have been burning, um, items that have come up for you during our season. And then um, Amy will share those with us and then we will be able to respond. And so we can have this like interactive time together, which we're really excited about. Um, so please, um, you can even give us those uh, questions or thoughts ahead of time if you want or anything else by going to uh, an email address, po uh, podcast.ccny.org. And we have a Facebook group um, which is the Revving Up listening, listening community, um, where you can interact with us there too. So here we are on to our episode. And um, we had a little joke going before because um, so Carrie and I are both in our penultimate semesters of seminary. So we, and this is the an ultimate episode of our podcast and what you can't see or hear right now is our producer miming taking a swig of eggnog every time we say penultimate we're in the <laughs> holiday spirit here my friends so please uh feel free to to make an eggnog uh, drinking game out of this episode if you would like to take a little drink of I'll have herbal tea every time penultimate comes up hmm. I'll have some coffee nice you have some coffee Amy's got her pretend eggnog this is gonna be a fun episode so yep. Yep. Harry how are you I'm I'm doing well I can't believe this is our penultimate semester of seminary and <laughs> oh. I love the word penultimate. It's it sounds so hoity toity. Oh, do you remember when you first learned that word? I remember. Mm, no, I don't. I mean, I was in like grad school for religious studies in 2004 <laughs> or something like that, and I'd never heard that word before. And I, one of my very very smart professors, threw this word out, and I just was like, oh, I'm looking that one up. You know, it was it was great. It was a great thing to learn. And yep. now I try to use it whenever possible. Yeah, yep. much sounds much better than second to the last. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, here we are, staring uh, down the tunnel at maybe graduation. 
And maybe. Don't say maybe. maybe. Yes. Congratulations for us both. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny how um, in seminary, it feels like there's so many moving parts to keep track of, and it just seems overwhelming. And yet when I think about what happens after seminary, it's like all the overwhelm with none of the structure. So um, yeah, but it's exciting too. So here we are um, finishing seminary, finishing our masters of divinity, like that's something you can master. <laughs> and then what's next um so what are you thinking about that megan um right now my plan is to um I, i'm gonna do this thing that people actually kind of caution against and used to say that you just can't do and all of these things but i do know people who've done it and been successful and um, have been able to get good advice from them. So I'm a religious educator. I'm a full-time religious educator, the director of education and family ministry at the Brooklyn, New York, UU congregation. And I've been there for, I think this is my ninth year there. And um, when I went, when I decided that I wanted to go to seminary, we um, all uh, collectively got on board with that plan. And the congregation has been supporting me through time and positive energy and you know keeping me going while I'm in this process and also working that job and we are um, hoping planning praying having faith that once I'm ordained um, they will hire me as an assistant minister right. their assistant minister so the, that church is just the right size to have a second minister has been for a while now it's a lot for one senior minister. There's almost 400 members. Um, and then, you know, over like, you know, a hundred children and youth. So it's just, it's a pretty big program for one, one minister. So this is, this is the goal and the plan. And, um, and that's great. We'll see, but also things could go another route. The most important thing to me is to be able to serve that community to in, in, in a very full and um, deep way. And it just felt like where we were going together was in that direction of ministry. And so I wanted to honor that and have the credential to, to be able to serve them in that way. And um, I also know that things don't always work out the way we want them to work out and plans change. And if I am not hired as the assistant minister, um, as long as we're still happy with one another and the work that I'm doing there is still fulfilling for the community and myself, then I'll, I will stay there and continue to do the family ministry that I have been doing, um, but just be doing it as a, also a fellowship UU minister. Mm -hmm. So how about you, Carrie? What are you thinking? Oh my goodness. I'm not exactly sure. What I've been talking about all along is um, doing a chaplain residency in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because I want to be a chaplain, but I just really value the grounding that chaplaincy gave me as part of my um, first unit of CPE that we, and, and we started talking about that at the beginning of the season, right? So it's, it's cool to kind of bring that back. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, I just love the grounding that that, that, get, that gives me just really being present to people's pastoral needs, but also being, um, being with people who aren't necessarily the people that would show up in our, in our sanctuaries mm -hmm. and um, learning about their experiences and, and helping them, you know, there, there's just something really humbling um, about being with people in that hospital space. Mm -hmm. that um that I'm just really want to get more grounding in mm -hmm. so we'll see where that goes that's beautiful and that's really I mean you seem from all I know of you and what we have talked about it seems like something that is really you're really good at and that you really have a passion for so I think that that's a great so so that and that's one option right we can Mm -hmm. We can serve, we can do year-long residencies. Um, some people become 
um, hospital chaplains or um, military chaplains, or um, you can be a chaplain that serves in um, maybe like in a, I don't know, it's like a retirement home or something like that. I'm not really sure where all of the spaces where chaplains are and are, at, are like it paid a living wage to be doing that work. Um, and I think it's a new, it kind of was a new thing for me. We kind of opened up this whole other world. And like you said, you know, we started off this um, season talking about our um, clinical pastoral education units and how transformative they were for us. And that for, I know for me, it opened up a whole new understanding of the kind of work that I can do in the world. I am at the place in my life where I've been doing work in a UU congregation for so long. I've done some other things too, kind of, you know, at piecing different things together for a long time, but I've always been working in a UU congregation since I was 24 years old. And I grew up in UU spaces and communities and camp. my parents worked at a UU camp and conference center. And, you know, so I'm just kind of like steeped in this UU community um, way of being in the world and go, doing my CPE and feeling that, um, that thing that I felt when I was in the hospital and I finally just kind of got it. And I had this like, oh, I belong here. I'm important here. I have a role to play here. Um, I felt it, it just cracked something open for me, realizing that, oh, there, this is something I could also do and feel really good about. And it's amazing work. And, you know, it's, it's ministry. It's just not in a specifically only you, you community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love doing interfaith work. So, you know, I just, I think that your idea about, about doing a residency for a year to get even more grounded in that work is just such a great idea. What amazing preparation for then, if you do decide eventually to go into parish ministry, you'll be that much more prepared. <laughs> At least in the pastoral care part of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So many other pieces, so many yeah. other pieces. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just think about all the different ways to minister in the world. Like I've heard of um, laundromat ministry or library ministry. Um, I, I think there's something about. Can you say um, more about that? I'm not exactly sure. The way I see it is just like hanging out at the laundromat and just oh. paying attention to people and and being there, like um, or the library. Like I've I've thought about starting to study at the library. And, and just be there and pay attention and, and mm -hmm. just be present to whatever happens in that space. So, um, and then you'd mentioned military uh, chaplaincy. A lot of our um, colleagues at, at Meva Lombard um, are considering that, or at least a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then there's parish ministry and there's, is it half-time, part-time, full-time? Uh, faith formation uh, you know even if you're working in a in a parish there's there's different roles there mm -hmm. senior minister membership outreach um faith formation and uh, various time commitments and so forth and then there's this whole community ministry thing and what is what is that and um so many like once once we graduate and once we pass the MFC, we're going to be ministers, but that can mean so many different things. Yes. Yeah, it really can. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of doing um, social justice ministry and serving as a community minister affiliated with a UU congregation mm -hmm. and being able to do um, interfaith work. There's this mm -hmm. group in New York City called, or maybe it's in the whole state, Faith in, Faith in New York maybe Faith NYC, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I um, have gone to a couple of their meetings, you know, like pre-seminary when I had <laughs> time to go to extra meetings. Mm -hmm. But it was just really cool to be in a social justice organizing space with people from many different faiths. Yeah. And I really mm -hmm. gravitate towards that um, interfaith work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And as you use it, um, I think we talked about this in the chaplain uh, when we were talking about chaplain uh, CPE in particular is how the Unitarian Universalist tradition helps us serve in more interfaith um, spaces because we do, we are taught or we do, it's easier for us to learn just because of the non-credal nature of Unitarian Universalism. Uh, many of us are more comfortable in those non-Christian or Christian spaces or Jewish, or, you know, we just, we just get that more um, broad theological uh, grounding than perhaps someone who's going into Christian ministry or becoming a rabbi or so, so forth. I noticed that in my CPE program. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. I felt like it seemed like it wasn't super obvious, but there were definitely times when um, people in my program, my, my fellow, um, you know, intern chaplain cohort would be visibly and would share how moved they were to learn something about another faith tradition that they had never thought about or hadn't really heard about before and that they were been so so kind of like in the tunnel vision of like I'm in rabbinical school I'm I'm in rabbinical school I'm doing all of this you know and it's very intense and you know or I'm I'm in um divinity school to become a you I mean a an Episcopalian priest, you know, or whatever their track is, noticed that it seemed like they had less experience with a broadly pluralistic and interfaith um, education and exposure, and seemed to really, from in my group anyway, really appreciated um, expanding that by talking to one another, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I that, that was my um, experience as well. Yeah, yeah. So here we are, um, finishing seminary, facing the MFC. I think you and I are both seeing them at uh, the ministerial fellowship committee, um, having our interviews in the same time period, and and uh, the end of next September. End of next September. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, we, so we, we, the idea here for me is that I have the summer to put, finish putting my packet together. It gets submitted mm -hmm. a month before, is it a full month before the interview? Yeah. Something like that. We'll figure that part out. But um, yeah, and just being, for me, that was really important to not try to see the Ministerial Fellowship Committee and do this, it's basically like this oral exam after turning in this big written whole packet that addresses all these different areas of competency. Um, I, it was important for me to see that committee and put that off until after I finished um, seminary. Um, and I think for me, it was around because we're doing, because I, doing an internship along with doing seminary um, is a really, has been a really great kind of practical learning experience for me, but it's also, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had done three years of academics followed by one full year internship during that one full year internship, I might have had the space to, to put together my packet and to prepare to see the ministerial fellowship committee mm -hmm. so that then, but, but also in UU ministry land, one also has to put together a website for the, to promote themselves to congregations that are in search. If you mm -hmm. want to go ahead and go into search and get mm -hmm. so that you're placed and ready to start your job and start getting paid, which mm -hmm. is super crucial in all of this too, right? Once you yeah. finish that internship, mm -hmm. I just did not have the bandwidth to do all of that at the mm -hmm. same time and have, um, in my case, the luxury of already working a full-time job. Um, if, if, I mean, calling that a luxury right now is a little difficult for me because it doesn't feel like that because it's so much work. So there's always, it's, it's always a, you know, weighing the where, where to put the, the work um, in because yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's also that piece of, 
um, where you are in your own formation when you're considering when to see the NFC. Mm -hmm. um, like I was originally preparation and I just decided I wasn't ready. And, and I think that was really a really wise thing to do. Um, so there's the, there's the preparation piece. There's the um, tons of reading, tons of writing, um, tons of going over your whole life and figuring out what pieces have been, you could really identify as ministry mm -hmm. and, um, and putting that all together and um, talking about, you know, where you think your ministry is going, what your theology is, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff. And you can't really put a timeline on that. And so for me, it was, I, um, I could have either gone ahead and seen the MFC, or I could have focused more on, on those formation pieces. Where am I, where do I see, how do I see my ministry in the world? Um, how does that fit into a parish setting? Um, you know, it, there was just a lot of formation I needed to do before I, I, uh, before I saw the MFC. Well, that's just so um, grounded and present and ministerial of you. <laughs> well, it's part of what we're learning, right? Mm -hmm. Is knowing mm -hmm. what we can do and knowing our boundaries and being able to be healthy, mm -hmm. um, you know, towards, towards our goals and do them in ways that balance out um, well. So, so it's really interesting that we started this season talking about our um, CPE, our chaplain training experiences. And here we are coming to the end of the season and, and realizing, you know, we knew, I mean, for me anyway, I knew it was a really formative experience that I did CPE over the summer. And I felt that it had changed me. I felt that transition and I was so grateful to you for having said, don't plan on doing anything else this summer. Just wipe the calendar clear because you're going to be full on, full in. Mm -hmm. And doing that and going full in like that was just a really amazing experience for me to be able to be in the space and, and be transforming without having like all these distractions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm so glad I did that. And now here we are thinking about the next steps and the future mm -hmm. and maybe next season we can even go a little bit more into talking about and um preparing and thinking about the our packets and the ministerial fellowship committee and going into those interviews feeling really well prepared and also what does it mean to end one's internship relationship with the congregation mm -hmm. um, we'll want to say goodbye well and you know, figure out how. I can't believe we're even getting to the point of thinking about that. No, no. But, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's you know, we're halfway through the second year of internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. we have some really good topics for for next season. I think I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Me too. Me too. But before then, since this is a penultimate session of uh revving up the next one is the final session for this season of revving up and that is the live event which will be happening on december 16th at 7 p.m eastern standard time and we hope you are there will be festive we might have eggnog without alcohol of course and um, oh, that would make a very different podcast yes yes we're not <laughs> i hope everyone will um uh if if you're interested in coming to this like join us in the holiday spirit wear your holiday attire and you know snap a pic and send post it in the facebook group i'd love to see your you know your your uh, your ugly holiday sweater or your light up light light up uh, necklace that's blinking or your you know, elf hat or whatever it is that you've, you've got there. Um, maybe you have, I don't know. I've seen these like menorah hats. There's so many holiday things, you know, would love to see it. Yep. Yep. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for emailing at podcast at ccny.org being part of our Facebook 
the Facebook group. This is a this is a community conversation. We'd love to hear where you are in your ministerial formation or your ministerial discernment or anything uh, ministerial or theological or whatever you want to ask us. Just just reach out. Just reach out. See you soon, everyone. Bye.